Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Indeed, we lay our crown and we worship the King of glory. We worship him who is our Lord. We worship him who is our God. We worship the Christ. We worship him who will remain faithful unto us. He is ever faithful. He is ever so loving. He said, for God so love you that he made a plan. The plan of God is to see you to be saved. The plan of God is to see you to be redeemed. The plan of God is to see you to be well. The plan of God is to see you to become prosperous, prospering in every way of your life, in your health, in your mind, in your ways, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your family. The plan of God remains for you to become prosperous, prospering in every way, that your health will be prosperous. God made a plan that if we receive the plan that he made for us, the plan that he has given unto us, and what is that plan? Who is that plan? The plan remain our master, Jesus Christ. It is he whom God has made for us. That if we believe him, that if you receive him, that if you call him father, that we will receive the spirit of the son, the spirit that knows Abba Father, the spirit that calleth Abba Father, is the spirit of God that is in the son. The spirit of God is in the son. So whoever believes in the son receives such grace. Whoever received the son received such might. Whoever received, whoever received uh, uh, the son receives such power. But in the appearance of God, will be made the manifestation of conscience. The appearance of God will be seen. The appearance of God will be, will be manifested in the life of the one who received it. And then we are here this morning, our blessed viewers. We are here this morning by the grace of God. And we welcome you all. We greet you. We say Messiah greetings to you. Uh, from whichever part of the world, whichever part of the continent, uh, whichever part of the social media platform that you are watching, uh, streaming, uh, we welcome you. Uh, may the King of Glory bless you all the more. Uh, welcome to June. Uh, welcome to the half that is, is already half. Uh, uh, the month, uh, the year has already run into half. I mean, we are seeing now 2024 uh, is, is in the mid year, uh, but we give God all the glory. Uh, the honor belongs to God. And, and, and we continue to say Ebenezer to his holiday for giving us the grace to be able to, to see the sixth six month of the year. The sixth month of the year, uh, it is a wonderful thing to be, uh, it is a wonderful privilege uh, for, for we that are able uh, to see the sixth month of the year. Uh, God loves you. God is with you. Uh, you are blessed. You are, uh, you are redeemed. And we believe that you are lifted on high. Uh, to continue to manifest what is in heaven here on earth. So the grace of God is with you, blessed viewers. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service. It's uh, our Holy Communion service as we are here to uh, to partake in the body. We are here to partake in, in the blood. And we are here to continue to uh, take uh, to partake from what our glorious master, Jesus Christ. Uh, is through, through him, we, are, we, we have an, uh, an access to the Father. Through Jesus Christ, we have an access to the Father. And what was the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has given unto us? Uh, he says, as we continue to partake in his body, as we continue to partake in his blood, the grace that set free. Remember, it is not by work. It is not by knowledge. It is not by might. It is not by power. It is by grace. Ephesians 2, 6, it says, it's by grace that we were saved. So that grace remains. That grace remains. That grace does not leave. That grace does not depart. It's grace. You do not work for it. It is there. But that grace has to be honored in our life. That grace has to be honored. So each time and each moment, the grace of God is honored in our life. 
And how do how does one honor the grace of God? By remaining in this world, by not allowing the world to depart from you. How can one remain in this world? The word of the Lord is on our lips. The word of God is in our mouth. The word of God is in our heart. The word of God is in our mind. We should speak the word of God. Meditate on his word. By we, by so doing, you are remaining in the grace. By so doing, you are holding on to the grace. By so doing, you are clinging on to the grace. And the grace of God never fails. The grace of God never fails. And it will never fail you. As you continue to hold on the grace of God, your life will never fail. The grace of God upon you will never fail. You will continue to manifest what is on high, what is in heaven, here on earth. Your life will manifest greater grace. Your life will reveal unto others that God is truly with you. And if God is with you, and if God remains with you, who can go against you? Who can be against you? No one can be against you. No one can go against you because God loves you. And the Lord God will continue to set you free. Uh, welcome once again. I remain Apostle Kenneth C.J. Chris, the son of Prophet Sekodane. We are here at Rabbanites International Ministries, a ministry that has been paid on to us through the grace of God upon the life of our father, Prophet Sekodane. And we welcome you there on TikTok. Uh, may you be blessed on the more. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Uh, thank you for using your platform uh, to share the gospel of our master, Jesus Christ. It is not our gospel. It is the gospel of our master, Jesus Christ. It is the good message that he has given unto us for we all uh, to share. Remember, out of his fullness, John 1 says, out of his fullness, we all receive an inheritance. Christ has remained and Christ has been, and Christ will always be our inheritance. And as we are commanded, John 1 16 says, out of his out of his fullness, we receive an inheritance to share. So we are sharing what we have received. As many who are following you on your social media platform, and as you are sending forth, as you are sharing, many also who come across this content will be blessed. Many who are going through situations, as, as they come across this content through your platform, the mercy of God will locate them. Thus, you are saving others just as you have been saved. May the King of Glory bless you. Uh, may the King of Glory be with you. We welcome all those that are on Facebook, those who are on YouTube. We greet you. Uh, may the King of Glory bless you all the more. Uh, thank you for availing yourself. Uh, thank you for making us uh, our partners in, in Christ. Uh, thank you for welcoming us in your heart. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Uh, thank you for praying with us as we pray for you. Uh, we remain together in the heart of the Father. Uh, together we are one in Christ, one in spirit. Uh, may the King of Glory bless you all the more. Uh, we thank you or we thank you as we continue Continue to thank God for your lives as you continue to see growth and spiritual development happen in your life. Uh, may the King of Glory bless you all the more. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, remain blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, blessed viewers, uh, we would like to encourage you right now to join us as we are going to be praying a uh, prayer of intercession, uh, interceding for others, uh, thanking God with intercession, uh, giving all the glory and all the honor to God Almighty uh, as we have seen in the course of the week. How God protects us, how God guides, how God uh, our presence continues to set us free. Uh, what could have happened uh, had not had not happened the way it was supposed to, uh, because of the grace of God and because of the prayer of the saints. Uh, your prayers, our prayers together uh, continue to bring restoration upon the land, continue to bring this restoration upon family, continue to make many who are uh, who were lost to be found. So your prayers continue to make the lost to be found. Your prayers continue to set captivity free. Your prayers continue to lift many up, lifting them up from every miracle, lifting them up from every burden, removing every yoke of slavery, removing every yoke of mental slavery, removing every yoke of sickness and infirmity that has tied them bound, removing that a power of addiction. Addiction has addiction has become a, a strong bound, a stronghold upon the minds of many. But because of the prayer of saints, as the Bible says, the prayer of saints, the prayer of saints save life. So as we are offering this prayer, as we are praying for others, we are praying for families, we are praying for our nations, we are praying for the community, we are praying for all the world, we are praying for the leaders, we are praying for the whole world in general, we are praying for the leaders of the whole world, we are praying for Christians, we are praying for even those who are non christians Christian, praying for their lives to receive Christ, praying for those who are lost, praying for them to be found, praying for every orphanage homes, I pray for all the youths, pray for all the boys and girls, I pray for all the institutions, 
institution, institution, um, institutions that have been constituted to serve humanity. We are praying for schools, uh, we are praying for the banks, we are praying for the hospitals, we are praying for all the workers, uh, even the self-employed, we pray for them. We pray for all the men and women of God, we pray for strength upon them, we pray for them, for them to remain Holding on to the grace, holding on to the grace that no matter things that stands on their way, that no, no matter the challenges that they are faced with, no matter the situation they find themselves in, no matter how tough is the circumstances that has withheld them, we pray for them to remain trusting upon the sacrifice, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ our Master have given unto us, his body, his blood is more than enough for us to be set free. His body, his blood is more than enough for us to be redeemed. This has redeemed us. This has set us apart. This has set us free. So let's continue to pray with what has given us freedom, what has brought freedom upon us, what has called us into freedom. Let's continue to pray for others to remain, to remain in that freedom. Without, without being fearful of the circumstances, many, many run out of God's freedom because of fear. Many, many doubt God's grace because of fear. Many, many walk in limitation because of fear. Many allow themselves to be controlled through situation because of fear. Fear has, has brought many to their knees. Fear itself has no power over the one who has the spirit of the sun. Because the spirit of the sun, the Christ, has already overcome. He has overcome. He has overcome. What brought fear to a man? What brought fear to a person? What stands on our way? What tends to intent? What, what, what tries to hinder? Whatever tries to hinder you from knowing God, whatever tries to hinder you from being in the presence of God, the spirit of the son, the, the, the spirit of the son, the Christ has already, has already put it down. It has already, it has already bring it to subjection. So it has no hold over your life. It says, in John 16, you will go through troubles. You will go through trials. He said, cheer up. Cheer up. So instead of being fearful, instead of being frightened, instead of being frightened, there are some dreams, there are some nightmares that come to a person and the person becomes frightened. Even the old day, the, the old day of the person becomes in that. What you're supposed to get, what you're supposed to receive that day has been, has been in that with. Why? Because your mind is not in the right space. The, the, your mind is not in the right space because you are busy thinking. You are having thought that what is happening? What's going to be? What's going to happen to you? What's going to happen with you? So already you brought judgment to yourself because you are frightened. You are being fearful. But instead of you to remain in that state, listen to what the master has said unto us. He says, my sons, he says, my people, he says, my own. Listen, you have trouble. Trouble will encounter you. So he never said trouble will not come to you. Studies. You may have trouble from your home, you may have trouble from family, you may have trouble from, from your community, from where you are staying, from your neighbor, from your friends, from your colleagues, you may have troubles in your schools, you may have troubles of challenges of any kind. But listen, whatever that encounters you, you are already victorious. That is why against anything that confronts you, you are already victorious. You are already victorious. So cheer up, as our master Jesus Christ said. He said, cheer up, for I have already overcome the world for you. So he has overcome every trouble before us. He has overcome everything that we encountered with us. He has overcome every challenges that we, that we present itself against our well-being, against our life, against our health, against our body. May the King of glory continue to bless you all the more. Having this knowledge is, is even one being set free. Having this knowledge, one remains free. Having this knowledge, one remains set free. Having this knowledge, one remains set free. May you remain in that freedom. Freedom that the King of Glory has called you to have. So right now, open your mouth, blessed viewers. Open your heart. Let the word of God that you have received, let the word of God that you have, that you have clinged onto, that you have known, pray with it so that the world will be saved. Pray with the word of God so that those that are lying in hospital, those that are sick, those in their home, those who could not walk, that they will receive healing. Those who could not move, that they will move by the spirit of the world that will, that will locate them. Remember, Psalm 107 verse 20. This is what the word says. I send forth my word and heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, 
all manner of infirmity, all manner of affliction. So nothing can stand in our way, nothing can stand against us. I'm just going to read quickly uh, uh, Psalms 107. Psalms 107, I'm just going to read quickly. Psalm 107, verse 20. It says, He sent forth his word and heals them and rescue them from the pit and destruction. He sent forth his word. Now, who is the word that was sent? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. In the beginning was the word, John 1. The word was Christ. The word was with God. So Christ was sent to heal, to deliver, to save. And Jesus Christ said, I have come, in John 10, verse 10, that you may have life. So the life that God intended for us is not a life of sickness. It's not a life of disease. It's not a life of infirmity. It's not a life of affliction. The life that God intended for us. So such is the life that we are going to pray with. Because we have received that life. How do we receive the life? When we commit our life unto Jesus Christ. When we ask him to be our Lord. When we ask him to be our Savior. When we ask him to be our Father. We have received that life. So we that have received that life. Let's pray with that life that we have received. That many who are yet to receive that life may be saved and may be delivered and may be healed. Father, Lord Almighty, let's pray together. Blessed be us. Father, Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. We worship you. We thank you for this day that you have given unto us. We honor your presence, Lord God Almighty. We honor you, Lord God Almighty, for you remain God over all of us. You remain God over the world. You remain God. You never change. You remain the same as yesterday. You remain the same as today. You remain the same as forevermore. May your name be praised, Lord God Almighty. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you for this wonderful day that you have given unto us. Thank you for your love that remains, O Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, O Lord.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Just experiencing it. Uh, some technical glitch on on Facebook Zoom. Okay. Amen. Yes. Uh, we first we, pray, we we bless God. We praise the Lord God Almighty. Now listen. Can we um? Let's just take um. Let's take the book of uh, uh, Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Okay. Now, now listen to this. Let me let me just quickly read here. I'm going to ask our reader to quickly read for us. Let me just read here. Isaiah 55, verse uh, uh, from 10. It says now, from verse uh, uh, 8. Isaiah 55, from verse 8. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, says the Lord. Says the Lord. He says, your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither my ways your ways. So this is something that many has to ask himself. Am I doing the things according to God's will? So I carry the, the thoughts of that. I carry the thoughts of the Because the book of Colossians 3 says, Set your mind on the things of God, things from above. Set your minds on those things. Set your mind on the things of the Father. Now, if we can learn to set our minds on the things of the Father, the word that we receive is spirit. The word that we receive, that we receive is what? It is spirit. It is life. Now, there is prosperity in that word. The Spirit of God can never die. The Spirit of God can never fail. The Spirit of God prospers. The Spirit of God prospers. You know, ever wondered how was, is it, was it possible, how it was possible for Joshua, who among his peers, among his, his friends, they began to say to him, how is it possible that you are not aging? You are not aging? You don't look old? You don't look weary? You don't look weak? No, they failed to understand that Joshua was being kept by the Spirit of God. Who may receive through the word that he failed to depart from. Meaning, Joshua refused to depart from the word just as God Almighty commanded him. So it was the will of God for Joshua to prosper because Joshua was told, never allow, never forsake the word. Never forsake the word. So he was instructed to be in meditation. If it was in the day, remain in meditation. If it was in the night, be in meditation. If it was midnight, remain in meditation. Meaning there is no break in one there is no break to one who is meditating constantly on the word. And there is no failure that you will experience it because you are you are you you are you are you've not break away. There is no breakage of the word from you. There's no breakage from the word from you. Now, these these are the thoughts of God unto us. These are the way that the Father had towards us. That if we learn, if we learn. To follow the way of God for our life. The grace of the Father that we have received will continue to be made multiply. It will continue to multiply us. Grace will continue to be multiplied in your life. Today, what has been multiplied in the life of many today are challenges. Worry. Stress. Sickness. Disease. Troubles. These are multiplying because one has not yet seek refuge under the grace of God. If you are yet to seek refuge under His grace, challenges also will be what will be multiplying because they are there to reveal the grace of God in one's life. Whenever you are told that being born again and in this world. 
you will not face challenges, that you will not face sickness. Know that you, 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 you've been told a lie and the information that you've received is not truth. Jesus says that the world we are living is filled with hatred and wickedness. That's why they hated him. That's why they were wicked towards him. The world that stood against him and said, crucify him, kill him. We want him to be hanged. We want him to be crucified. They hated him. Despite what he has done for us, despite what he has done for the world, what he did for the world, the world still hated him. So the, the nature of the world that we are living is filled with wickedness, is filled with hatred, is filled with destruction, is filled with deceit, is filled with lies, is filled with manipulation, is filled with rulers and principalities. Yet, Greater is one that is in you. Greater remain the one that is in you than the one that is in this world. So now we are in the world that we have already what has conquered it. So we are living in the world that we carry what has overcome the world. He said, greater is he that is in you. Greater remain the one that is in you than the one that is in the world. So how does one begin to have this? How does one begin to experience this? How does one begin to live this? It begins from your soul mind. It began from what? From your soul mind. Whatever you put here affects your whole personality. For the world says, think from above. Think from above. Because what is from above is good. What is from above is righteous. What is from above is, is, is love. What is from above is faithfulness. What is from above is goodness. So let your process come from above. Let it come from above. This is an instruction given unto us. Let it come from above. Let it come from above so that the above life, the above life that God intended for us can be seen. It can only be seen through challenges. Because everyone goes through challenges. Look, again, I'm repeating. Let no one tell you that there are no challenges in this world. Because you are a Christian, that you don't face challenges. No. Challenges happens to be a foot map, a footprint. It, it, it has to, it, 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 beco it becomes the grass that we Christians walked on so that the unrighteous will see the righteousness of Christ Jesus in us and thus draw them closer, draw them closer to God. How is it that this person always escaped these traps? How is it that this person? always thumbs up triumph in every situation that he or she faces is because greater lives in you. It's because the one who has put the world at his position, at his place, lives in you. It dwells in you. It dwells in you. It's in you. So he lives in you. So what began from the mind is what we take in. The book of 2 Corinthians 7, it says, all these great blessings, all these great blessings are ours. Now, who bless? The Spirit of God bless. The Spirit of God bless. It says, it says all these great blessings are ours. However, we must learn, we must learn to separate ourselves from things that contaminate. So where does contamination come from? Contamination comes from the mind. Contamination enters from the mind. 
if your mind is not set in the right way of the Father, if your mind is not set in the things of God, if your mind is not positioned, if your mind in, is not at the right position of the Father, understand that contamination can come through. And the enemy, the enemy is restless. The enemy is restless. Listen, the enemy was restless. He was going around seeking, looking for who to devour. Looking for who to devour. That is why you must guide your mind at all times. Guide your mind at all times. Know the kind of thoughts that you are having in your thought process. Know the kind of things that you are feeding to your mind. Know the kind of things that you are going through. Do not let yourself to be dragged into things that could cause you to be contaminated. Do not allow your mind to be far from the things of God. The Spirit, the world blesses. The Spirit, the world blesses. So if you receive the word, blessing accompanies you. Now, listen to this. It's a um if you go to first John, first John four, but before then, let's read the uh, Isaiah 55 that we open. Um, let's read Isaiah 55. Um, okay, let's start from verse six, ne? Isaiah 55 from verse six. Uh, you, you understand this now, verse verse. Isaiah 55, open your Bible. Let's start from verse 6. Then. It says, Seek, inquire for, and require the Lord, why he may be found. Seek. So what is your mind seeking? What does your mind seek? What does your mind seek? What does your mind seek? He says, seek, inquire for, and require the Lord while he may be found, claiming him by necessity and by right. Do you see that? Claiming him by necessity and by right. You know, Matthew 7 says, you ask and you shall receive. You seek and you shall find. Meaning, if you knock, the door shall be opened unto you. He says, seek and inquire for. Seek and inquire for. Now, let's go to Colossians, Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3. Listen to from verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, Thus, sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek, aim at and seek the rich and in, in, internal treasures, the rich internal treasures that are above, that are above, that are above, where Christ is seated at the right end of God. Now, he says, verse 2, and set your minds and keep them on what is above. And set your minds and keep them from what is above. The, 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 this is what he says. The writer said this. If then, verse 1, if then you have been raised. And now, a question may be asked, how, how was it that we were raised with him? That is why we said, by grace, we were saved. Ephesians 2, 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 6. It says, we were, we were, meaning together, we, we were buried with him, crucified with him. It means, whilst Jesus was being stripped, naked, beaten, battered, wounded, it was for our sake. That's why the prophets Prophet Isaiah wrote, Isaiah 53, Whom has believed our message? To whom 
as this been revealed to? It began as that three from verse one. It says, who has believed our message? Now, who will receive this message? I want you to understand this. Prophet Isaiah was speaking from the hold because the word of God came to him. And he, he, he said, who has believed our message? Now, the giver of the message, the one whom God has sent, meaning as God planned it, God is, is a good planner. God is a good planner. God planned everything to perfection. There's no, there's no error. There's no mistake. God planned everything to perfection. God knew that man's ability, man's ability will fall short. That's why Adam was, was unable to reveal Christ. But for you to know that we all have the breath of God. Adam was made through the dust, right? But Adam received a breath into his nose tree. And that was the breath from, of, of God. But not the full breath. Not the full breath. Not the full breath. Not the full breath. Because if you carry the full breath of the Father, the, 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 the sin Sin can never, when the enemy can never, sin can never come near you, or sin can never, able, you can never even have the thought of sin. Okay, so only one who is from the Father, the Son was was from the Father. The Son did not come from 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 the dust. The Son never came from the dust. The Son was did not. Jesus Christ did not came the way Adam came. Adam came from the dust. But Jesus came by the word. So there's there, there, there's no there, there's no there's no uh, uh, same there. There is no same there. One came from the dust, the other, the life giver, came from the word. The word that gave life. That's where Jesus came from. The word that gave life. Jesus came from the word. Because now the word came from a messenger of God, which who, who was the angel. And the, the word was given to him to present to Mary. And Mary, being a servant, being a faithful one, says, let it be according, according to the will, according to the word. Meaning, let the mercy of God, let the will of God prevail. Because she received the mercy and said, let it be according, according to the will of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Do you understand that now? God must be with you in order. So Mary was able to give birth to her master, Jesus Christ, because God was with her. It, it, it could not be possible for Mary to conceive or to give birth to her Savior without, without the Spirit of, of, of the Father, without, without God. Now get this. Now get this. If then, Colossians 1, if then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead. Now, aim at, aim at. Now, I, we just quoted Romans 6, verse 6, and Ephesians 2, verse 6. When you take it from Ephesians 2, start from verse 4, to 6. Now, you, uh, you begin to see the, 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 the plan of God manifesting itself there. It says, we were, the writer said, we were buried. We were crucified. We were beaten. We were beaten. So those stripes that Jesus was taking was for our sake. It was for our own good. It was for our own benefit. He was taking them. He was taking them so that whenever those trouble comes, whenever those situation comes, Whenever those crises arises, the price has been paid. The price has been paid. That's why no matter what you are going through, no matter what is happening in your life, if you do not understand or if you do not have the knowledge that the price has been paid, you become a prisoner of that situation. Many are a prisoner of their, of their trouble. Many are prisoner of their, of their circumstances. Many are prisoner of their situation. Many remain a prisoner of their situation. 
Why? Because they lack the wisdom, because they lack the knowledge, because they lack understanding. So when you lack understanding, when you lack wisdom, when you lack knowledge, you become a prisoner of that situation. So you are trying so hard to come out from that situation, but you lack the way of coming out from it. So you stick with temporary out, temporary solution. And that is how many have been operating today. If you are yet to understand what it means to be called to freedom, you'll be, you'll be experiencing temporary freedom. You see, you you might think that freedom can be can be bought through money, but let me put it to you: there is no amount of money that can brought to you, that can brought freedom to you. No amount of money, no matter how much it is, no matter how how wealthy you are, no matter how wealthy you are. But there's 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 there is a a thing that is happening these days that um. The, the the according to according to what has been reported, uh, the 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 richest people, the, the wealthiest people on earth, have have been uh, building uh, bunkers, bunkers. When you say bunkers, meaning mansion underground. People dig uh, ten feet, twenty feet from underground, and they build they build houses underground, and it is covered. Houses are underground, covered, and people began to wonder why are they building houses. What about those who went to the moon and begin to build something in the moon? There is nowhere you can hide. There is no where can you hide from the spirit of God? There is nowhere. Why? The spirit of God make it all things. In the beginning was was the world. Is it the spirit of God over and around the face of the earth? So where can you hide from what sees, from what knows? Even before you think of it, he knew it. Even before you put it into action. These are the things that many people do not understand. Before you do something, you think that God is not aware and you want to present. He is aware of it. You, you, can, you can only honor him when you present into, into, into his hand. You present it before him, he will bless you because you honor him. God honors those who honor him. So no matter where they hide by building, when it's time for destruction to come, it will, be, it will start from where they are hiding from. The destruction will start from wherever you're hiding. Because where can you go from the Spirit of God? Where can you hide from His presence? Where? In the north is there. In the south is there. Even in the underground is there. In the east, in the west, it is there. So you cannot hide. You can never hide from God's presence. You can never hide yourself from the Spirit of God. He will locate you. He will find you out. He will find you out. He will locate you. There's no hiding place. You have no place to hide. You have no place to hide. So the good message that uh, that uh, prophet Isaiah spoke of in Isaiah 53, the message Jesus Christ received, meaning according to the plan of God. Remember, Isaiah was speaking to God. God, he said, he said oh Lord, who will believe our message? So whom has this been revealed to? No one but the Son. No one but the son. That is why the son says, no one knows the son saved the father. No one knows the father saved the son. Why? The son and the father are one. Now, look for verse 18. Here comes the master. Here comes the, the, the son. Here comes our father. Here comes our glorious master, Jesus Christ. And he said, verse 18, the spirit of the father, meaning the spirit of the Lord, whom Isaiah communicated with. He said, the spirit of the Lord has anointed him, Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. The anointed So Isaiah was not anointed. Neither did Isaiah have the spirit of son. Yet, it was revealed to Isaiah that at a later stage in time, this is going to be the future that God intended for his people. So Isaiah saw into that future that he was so pleased and began to be, began to began to rejoice that wow, this generation of God, this God's own people, this God's own people, they are true, uh, 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 they are true saints because their life is coming from the true saints. So now they become they become uh, 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 the saint of the Father here on earth. 
That's why we say to many people, don't, don't wish to merely want to die and say you want to go to heaven. You are sinning. You are sinning, meaning you, are, you, 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 meaning you do not appreciate what Jesus Christ has done for you. Say, I can't wait to exit the earth. No, there's a glory in heaven that is to be revealed on earth. You are the one to reveal what is in heaven here on earth. So stop running away for what God had already done and planned. We can never escape the plan of God. We cannot run from his presence. We cannot escape his faithfulness. We cannot escape his goodness. We cannot escape the power of God. No matter what you think you know, no matter what, how, no matter how you do it, you cannot escape the plan of God. You can you can delay the plan, but it will surely happen. Habakkuk 2 says, the vision may be tarry. <laughs> it may be tarry. Maybe it may be delayed, but it will surely happen. It will surely happen at his own time. At his own time, not your own time. No, don't think that, don't, don't ever think that you are in control of something that you are never in control of. Don't ever think that you are in charge of something that you are never in charge of. Jesus, Jesus made the Pharisees and the Sadducees to understood. They are teachers of the law, yet they were never in charge of anything. But to them, they thought they were in charge. To them, they thought they were the maker. To them, they thought they are the taker. To them, they thought they, they are the ones that were meant to speak how things must be because they were entrusted with that position. Listen, it, in those days, whenever someone is sick, whenever someone is going through anything like leprosy, such a person by law is not allowed nor permitted to dwell among those who have sanity or those who have those who, who do not have such uh, leprosy. So they, they, they were taken out of the city to dwell out of the city. It is only when the priest has marked them to return back to the city and dwell among the living, that's when they will be allowed to come into the city. So everyone in the, city, in the, in the community, everyone in those days, look unto the priest. And who are these priests? The, Phar the Pharisees, the Sadducees. They were the one in charge. But our master Jesus Christ made them to know that you are just teachers of law without authority. Meaning they, they were never free from what they thought they were free from. Now, listen. Our minds must be set on the above. On our minds must remain on things from above. If you ever want to prosper, if you ever want your way to be like God's way, if you ever want your health to prosper, if you ever want your business to prosper, if you ever want your career to flourish, if you ever want your marriage to remain whole, if you, if you ever want your ministry to grow, if you ever want that your, your home, your home may, may, may be made whole, listen, set your mind, set your mind, set your mind on things from above. Set your minds on things from above because God has planned for you. God has planned for your life. 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 Listen to this message. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil. And not for evil. To so give you hope in your final outcome. Meaning, you are in a hopeless state. You are in, in, in a die, in a die situation. But here comes, here comes the Father, one who gives you hope. And that hope is found in your faith for him. If you have faith in him, if you have faith in him, your faith will never fail you. If you have faith, your faith will never fail you. When the boat capsizes, the disciples were weary. 
they were panicking. Some of them as big fishermen, they know they knew what it what it means when they both ca capsize on the sea. They knew what it means. There is no way you can swim out of that. It's only one way: death, or you manage to to reverse the boat that was capsized. So they were they were panicking. But the whom they were with was less concerned. It was less concerned because what is in him is greater than the sea itself. So he was less concerned. And as he was sleeping, he was sunk, he was he was sinking in his sleep. Do you know what it means that you go into the sea, you go, or you, if, 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 even if you go to, if you go to a pool and 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 you and you and you immerse yourself underneath the water, there's 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 only a matter of time that one one can stay long. Some can stay maybe uh seven minutes, some 15 minutes, depending on how one has trained their lungs to take to endure the water. It's, it's about training. If you can train your lungs, you, you can train your lungs to, to stay in underneath the water for as long as seven uh seven minutes or, or even 10, 15 minutes. But the moment it occurred, it happened with our master Jesus Christ and his disciples, immediately they were they were in, in, in fearfulness. They were panicking. They were panicking. They looked, they don't know what to do. And the only option they have was to wake him from his sleep because Jesus was in deep sleep. And now he said, Master, do you not care about us? How, how is it that, how is it that they were able to make that statement? Do you not care about us? Him that always, him that already a, a plan to lay down his life for, for them and us. So how is it possible that he does not care about you? If Jesus does not care about you, he will not lay down his life for you. He laid down his life for you because he cared for you. He laid down his life for you because he loved you. His love for you is not a love with emotions, not feelings. It's an unconditional love. He loves you regardless. Regardless, he loves you. So now the love he shows, he, 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 when, when they're asking this question, do you not care about us? He made them to ask. He asked them, where is the faith? After he has spoken to the sea to be still, the storm to be still. Now he asked them, where is your faith? Where is that faith? Where is that faith? Meaning the words that they've seen, that they've heard, the word that they've seen, that they've received, they've not put it into practice. They've not put it into practice. So how can the world prosper a person? How, how can the person prosper in life? When you hear the word of God, you put it into practice. It says, put the word into practice and who will be with you? The God of peace shall be with you. The one who will give you hope in your final outcome. It shall be with you because your dependency is not, is not anything. Your dependency is not a, a physical thing. Your dependency is not any idol or any image. Your dependency is on the word. So you are depending on the word. You are holding on to the word. You are trusting the word. So now the, your life begins to prosper because you are holding on to what can never fail. Your life now begins to prosper because you are clinging on what what has no failure within it? Which is what? The word. Which is what? The word of God. Now, we've been told, we've been instructed here, Colossians 3, that we should set our mind. But why is it, why is it that that instruction came to us? Why is it that instruction came to us that we should set our mind on the above? And why is it that Apostle Paul equally wrote earlier in the book of 2 Corinthians 7 that we should not in any way, meaning by any way necessary, one should not allow self to be contaminated. Because whatever you feed your mind, that becomes who you are. If you are thinking of sickness, sickness now begins to come into your body. If you are thinking of poverty, poverty now begins to circle you. If you are thinking of failure, failure begins now to run with you. If you are thinking of rejection, rejection now begins to be around you. Why? Because you are calling such thing to affectionate into your life. You are calling such thing to affectionate into your body. You are calling such thing 
to have a place in your life. Because why? Your mind, your mind, your mind is simply calling forth what is not of God. But the plan of God is not of evil into your life. The plan of God is not for your life to fail. The plan of God is not for your life to function. The plan of God is not for your life to be to be miserable. You know, so some have not stopped saying, I'm living in a they, they even they even profess it. They even accepted it. You ask you 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 kept on saying this that my life is miserable, my life is mis miserable, and you are a Christian. How would you continue to say your life is miserable? Did Jesus Christ give you the miserable life? Did, did Jesus Christ give you a life of misery? No, he gave you the life of mystery, not life of miserable, but the life of mystery. So learn to identify what is mysterious. And live in the mysterious life, not living a life of miserable. Because it is what you fed your mind that caused you to see miserable things. Okay, now. Let's go to uh, Proverbs. This is something that we know. Um, Pro Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, eh? From verse uh, 7. Listen to this. Eh? Proverbs 27 from verse 7. Listen to this. This is something that I'm sure many people already have come across this uh, uh, this message in the Bible. It's very, very important for you to understand. Because if you do not feed your mind what is good, Philippians 4, he said, whatever that is good, whatever that is lovely, whatever that is admirable, whatever that is good report, many good message, he said, whatever that is loving, adorable, admirable, whatever that gives you peace, whatever that brings comfort to your body, whatever that gives you life. So if you are thinking that, hey, I, I'm rich, of course, you'll be rich. If you are thinking, I'm strong, of course, you'll be strong. If you are thinking that I'm more than a, a conqueror, of course, you are more than a conqueror. If you are thinking that the way out from every sticky situation as we made. If you are thinking of it, of course, it begins to happen. It began to happen. Listen to this. Proverbs 23, from verse 7. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you that now? For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart. Who thinks you? As you think now, you become. 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 So your thought process affects your own personality. Your thought process affects your own being. Your thought process affects who you are. Did Jesus allow what they says about him? Did he dwell on it? Did he ask them in Matthew 16? Uh, by the way, they were all together. He was with his disciples in Matthew 16. Then he asked them, what do people think about me? Not that he thought of it, or not, no, not that he, he is dwelling on it. He only asks his people, his followers, his disciples. He only asks them for, for, for him to make out how did they perceive him? How did they receive him? How, how and what are they seeing in him? Remember, each of them that, he, that God has given to him, each of them had an encounter with him. Beginning with Andrew, when you read John 1, when John the Baptist said to them, this is the Messiah, he is the one, they began to follow him. They began to ask, where do you live, master? Where do you live? He said, he has no home. Hey. Okay, we'll follow you. These are people who has home. He made, hey, Jesus Christ. People who has home, people who has comfort, people who has wives, who have families. All of a sudden, they abandoned their family. They had a counter now. Listen, they had a counter. They abandoned their homes. They abandoned their family. And they begin to uh, they begin to follow the master now. 
anywhere the master goes, they follow him. And you know what they did? They now took, they now, they now, they now went to their brother. They went to their brother to say, we have found him. Their senior brother, they went to him. We have found him. And this one, this one is someone who, who has had a counter with different kind of things. He has had encounters with different kinds. So he's not he's not willing to give anything, anything a chance because he has seen them all. He has seen them all. That's why he used the word another holy man. Because he has seen them all. He has he has had encounter with them all. But now, when when the genuine genuinity, the genuinity of the Christ was made manifested at the sea where he was a professional of. From what he was good at, what he was good with, what no one can tell him because he knew the time and the hour where it's time to catch the fishes. Now, when he had a counter with our master Jesus Christ, and he was revealed the time that he was revealed to when, 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 uh, uh, and how to catch the 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 best and 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 what was caught was bigger than what he has ever achieved. As a fisherman, no one has to tell him that encounter that he had with our master at that moment brought him into submission. He brought him into what? In, into humility. He immediately he changed his stance. He changed his confession. He changes his confession. Now he saw that this is not like the ones he used to have the encounter with. There might be people you, you might have encountered in your life. People who have broken your trust in God. People who have caused you not to have keen interest of fellowshipping, of praying. People who have caused you to begin to begin to ask questions if Christianity is, is true in your life. People begin to uh, people who have done things to you that warrant you to ask if truly God uh, existed. Listen. Everything that happened is according to the plan of God. Yes. Everything. Those who misuse you, those who abuse you, uh, those who misled you, those who misguide you, everything was in accordance to the plan of God. Do you not know how Andrew went with our master, meaning they took our master, Jesus Christ, to meet with, to meet with their, their brother? To say to him, we have found him. Do you not understand what that means? Do you not know what that entails? It is simply saying, yes, this is the Messiah. The one who our forefathers, our forefathers wrote about. The one whom we, are, we were expecting. You remember the, the Samaritan woman in John 4? Meaning, meaning, before ever John baptism came, they, they've heard before John Baptist, they heard. Many of them heard from Moses. Many of them heard from, from Elijah. Many of them heard from Daniel. They said, the one that our, our prophets spoke of. So they heard about him. They heard about him. But they never knew that he had already come and he dwells amongst them. When, they went, when John the Baptist was sent to them, I do not know because he is the light. And I do not have the light. When John the Baptist said he do not have the light for him to see. But he's among, he lives amongst amongst them. This was what John Baptist said to the people. So he lives amongst you. He lives amongst you. So Andrew took our master Jesus Christ to meet with his brother to say, We have found him. Now, Peter immediately threw himself. Through himself, through himself. Look, Job, when he received the messages that is, he has lost his home, he has lost his family, he has lost his his uh, wealth, he has lost his farm, he has lo lost his uh, uh, his li uh, his livestock, he has lost his crops. Job did not weep. Job did not murmur. Job did not cry. Job simply took out the royal garment, the expensive garment he was wearing. He took it out, and what did he do? He threw himself on the on, on, on the on the ground 
and he, he acknowledges he acknowledges the Father. He acknowledges God. In, in meaning, he says, God, you are the giver. God, you are the taker. But who brought the calamity to, onto Job? Who brought the calamity? Was it God who brought the calamity onto Job? It was the evil one. It was the evil one who brought the calamity. The enemy. But now, yes, God permitted him. God permitted him. But he went ahead with it. He went ahead with it. The enemy went ahead with it. Now, Job did not ask the enemy, why are you doing this to me? Job did not give any referential thoughts. He did not give any, any referential thoughts to the enemy as to why are you doing this to me? He did not in any way. Meaning, if one is giving thoughts to the evil, wicked desires that has been perpetrated against you, you are busy worshipping and making that issue your idol. Job, Job did not in any way question or have any issue with the enemy irreverent God to the shame of the enemy. Because now the, the, the enemy was brought to shame. Because he thought that Job will curse God. He thought Job will curse God. We are never meant to ask why me of all this. God, why is this happening to me? That is cursing before God. Because, listen, you, listen, when you understand that anything and everything that happens, whether good, whether bad, is as a plan of God. You will not have any time. You will not have any regard. You will not even find it necessary to ask God, why me of all this trouble? You will not even ask. Because you begin now to understand, hey, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is within me. So the strength to do all things is upon me. So this is you. Singing, this is you meditating, this is you dancing, meaning you are not paying attention to your trouble. You are keep you keep you kept on saying, Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me. That is the book of first John chapter 4, verse 4. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me. So you 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 refuse, you refuse, you refuse to be yoked, you refuse to be burdened. You keep you kept on holding on. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in me. Greater lives in you. Than the one that in, in the world. Okay. Amen. He says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As one who records, he says to you, eat and drink. Yet his heart is not with you, but is grunging the cause. So as, as someone is, as someone think it, one become it. Now, for us to be made, to, to be made, to be made in, in accordance to, in accordance to the will of God, the plan is for us to have God's thoughts. That's why Isaiah 55 says, Your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways. Now, God in his infinite love and mercy, gave unto us his only begotten son. Whom receive the good message from the Father, whom in turn has shared and gave us this message. That is why he said to Martha and the family member, even to Mary, to say to them, your brother is not dead, he's been sleeping. But we know um, he's dead. It's been four days. He's been, he's been placed in the tomb. Listen. He's not dead. He is sleeping. He's not dead. Because I am the resurrection. I am the life. Meaning, he cannot be alive or he cannot be there, then death reign. Uh, uh, I don't know if someone is getting this. You see, he cannot be there, then death reign. That's why he said to Stephen and the disciples that it is for your own good that I was not there. Because now, Jesus knew that it was according to the plan of the Father. This was God's plan. That 
Lazarus will be put to sleep for four days so that the glory of God will be seen. So that many who before do not believe in Jesus Christ, so that many who before doubted Jesus Christ will see that they are doubting God. So God made it like that. God made it like that. That's why he said, Jesus says to the sister, hey, it is not unto death. It is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. But they did not understand when he said that. They did not understand. They were weeping. They were weeping. Now, when they heard that he, was, that he has arrived, when they heard that our master Jesus Christ has arrived, they, here comes, here comes, weeping at his feet. Weeping at his feet. Now, the master, whom, whom was more than pleased to come and reveal the glory of the father, to come and reveal his, his father's glory. He, he, he was moved by their compassion, but still, he said unto them, just be calm. Be calm. I'm here. He is not sleeping. He is not sleeping. Now, those who would never believe in him, those who never regarded him as anything, those who never believe that he is being used by God Almighty, that their, their, their theory and their thoughts was, was put to shame. Because now when Jesus spoke the word, Father, I thank you for this already has been done. Father, I thank you. Meaning, he thanked the Father for what the Father has done. But eyes have not seen what the Father has done, but he knew what the Father has done. Eyes have not seen. They are, they are yet to see what he said to them in John 11. They are yet to see. But he already knew. He already seen. So he thanked the Father. But it has to be like this so that many who do not believe who will be made to believe by seeing what eyes have not seen. So the master said this, Lazarus, come forth. Now remove, remove the stone, remove the rock, remove whatever it is that was used to cover the tomb. Now Lazarus, come forth. Now here comes Lazarus. Now I said, take off the embalmment, the embalmment procedure. Take it off because embalmment procedure can never prevail on the spirit of the sun. Embalmment procedure can never prevail in the spirit of the sun. So how can one eh, prosper in the plan of God? How can one prosper in the plan of God? Let your mind be set on things from above. Let your mind reflect the things that Jesus Christ has done for you. Let your mind be on the body. Let your mind be in the blood. He says, by daily partaking of him, even in thoughts, even in process, your life will be will, be, will not only be prosperous, but will be calling the things of God to affectionate. Calling the things of God to affectionate. You know what it means? To call the things of God to affectionate, meaning you are receiving that report. The report that changes reports. This has the ability to change reports. Report that is not pleasant before God. This has the grace to change it. So what, what, whichever report, however it was presented before you, this has the grace. This has the grace, the enablement to change that report. To report that is pleasing before God. So every report that is not in accordance, that is not in, in the will of the Father, this has the grace to change it. So it is high time that one began to set his mind, a mind, on things from above. Who is, who is at the above? The Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is there. He is there. So when your mind is with him, which is what we have received. Now, 1 Corinthians 2 Verse 16 says, we have received the mind of Christ. We have received the mind of Christ. Not men's mind. Not our, our parents' mind. Not our parents' mind. You do not receive your parents' mind. And stop trying to want to receive your parents' mind. Stop trying to want to be like your, your, your biological father, your biological mother. Be like Jesus Christ. 
Try, stop trying to be like your grandfather nor your grandmother. Be like Jesus Christ. Be like Jesus Christ. Your your biological parents were just uh, 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 they're just uh, uh, whom God used to bring you here on earth. They themselves knew that they also are not your true parents. This is what Mary, say, Mary and Joseph knew all along that they are just uh, 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 the vehicle that that God used to bring His Son to earth. They understood that. That's why when Jesus called forth Mary, He says. Uh, uh, woman, these are your children. He says, she, children, this is your mother. This was what he says to the disciples. Before, before he finished, he finished the, the, the hold of rulers and principality here on earth. He finished it. He finished everything. He made it known to them. He made it clear to them. Woman, cry no more. You are not my mother to begin with. Cry no more. A woman, he never called. He never called Mary mother. He never called Mary. The Bible never recorded that he, he called Mary mother. He said, "Woman." On the on, in John two, the first miracle that Jesus did, he said, "Woman, what do we have in common?" This was what Jesus said. He never said, "Mother, what do we have in common?" He said, "Woman, what do we have in common?" Woman, cry no more, weep no more. So by setting one's mind on the things from above, the grace that sets you free now begins to multiply. The grace begins to multiply. Now you begin now to do things. Things that, things that limit your, your, your lineage, things that your lineage could not do, you will do greater. Things that those whom you know could not, could not attend, could not attend, could not reach, you will go further. Where there is limitation, you will go, you will go above expectation. Because great, great grace is upon you and it keeps on multiplying. It keeps on multiplying. Read for us quickly there. First John 4, verse 4. Then. First John 4, verse 4. First John 4, verse 4. All right, listen to this. All right, first John verse four. Okay, but let me start from verse. Uh, um, let me start from verse uh, verse two. Okay, well, let me start from verse one. It's fine. Beloved, do not put faith in every spirit, but prove, but prove, test the spirits to discover whether they proceed from God. For many false prophets have gone forth into the world. But this you may know, perceive, and recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, actually has become man and has come in the flesh is of God. And ask God for its source, 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 source as in resources. The source to make resources in life. How can one be resourceful? If, if your source is from this world, your resources will not be able to stand the test of time. If your, if your source is coming from man's mind or man's ability, when flood comes, when storm comes, when rain comes, that source that source will not be able to, to stand the test of time. But one whose source is from God, one whose source is from God, such one become a resourceful for life. Is a resource, is a resource that, that, that has no limitation to it. Whether there is dry season, whether there is rainy season, you're, you continue to be resourceful. I mean, if if you take if you take if you take there are so many stories about some some vineyards, some some farmers who whether this whether there is drought, whether there is famine, the farmer keeps producing, keeps producing, keeps keep producing. Now I, I don't want to talk about the the the, the, the woman who was so kind to uh, to Prophet Elisha, who when the prophet came to her house and asked, "What do you have?" 
the woman said, I have this. It is for me and my son, for us to eat and die. For us to eat and die. Because why? There was famine in, in the land. I Meaning there was hunger. There was hunger in the land. A deep hunger in the land. There was a deep hunger in the land. And no one has anything to eat. People are dying of starvation. Now, a prophet of God came into the household of the woman who only had little to eat for her and her son, knowing fully well that it could be their last meal. So he told the prophet, this is all I have, what I'm giving to you. Now, he, she, she acknowledges, she acknowledged, I want you to understand this, she acknowledged the prophet. Just as the word says here, if anyone acknowledged that Jesus Christ is the Lord, if anyone acknowledges, so the, the woman acknowledges the prophet and gave to the prophet now the blessing of God that came forth from the prophet. It maketh the woman to be resourceful. No, there was, there was, imagine, there was starvation. There was famine, meaning there was no food. There was no food. The woman and her household was blessed. So a house that was already on the verge of seeing death after, after, Probably the last meal. The household, the dweller of the household, which was the woman and the child, became blessed. They became blessed that their resources was, was able to feed, to feed the community and even beyond. Such is the grace that is upon the saint of God. Now listen to this. Now listen to this. Verse 2. By this, you may know, perceive, and recognize. Say, by this, meaning this is the way that you can know. This is the way that you can perceive if this is from God or not. He says, the Spirit of God, every spirit which acknowledges and confesses the fact that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, actually has become man and has come in the flesh, is of God. Ask God for its source. Ask God for its source. Now, verse 3. Every spirit which does not acknowledge and confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but would honor, destroy, severe, disunite him, is not of God, does not proceed from him. This non-confession is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you heard that it was coming, and now it is already in the world. Now listen. It is already in the word, meaning the word, John 16 says, the word is full of trials. The word is full of tribulation. The word is full of haters. The word is full of wicked, wickedness. Many who, 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 who thrives on being wicked. Many who derives joy in making others' life miserable. There are, there are loads and loads and lots of them here on, in, in this world. They are placed in this world. With their evil ways, their heart is filled with evil wickedness. It doesn't mean you should conform to their ways. I mean, you've encountered many people whom you 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 you, you could see that they live in wickedness. They they cherish doing or being wicked. They love being wicked. I mean, you you you've encountered such people. But this is what the world is saying of you. In in the book of Romans twelve, it says, "Do not conform to their ways." Do not conform to their way. So how can one, how can one avoid not to be con not to be conformed to their ways? It's, it's not it's not difficult. It's not difficult. You see, if you do not if you do not uh, 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 um, um, by not conforming to their ways is by renewal of minds and by not doing what is evil in the sight of God. Meaning, you show love to those who hate you. You love those who persecute you. You love those who, who does evil against you. You love those who does wicked acts towards you. You say, hate who loved you. Pray for those. Pray for those. You see, if you, if you love your enemy, you will pray for them. If you love your enemy, you will pray for them. And it is not so you doing, but you are, you are honoring God by honoring his word and his command. By honoring the word of God and his command, that makes you to become that of God. Jesus says in, in John 14, if you abide in my word, meaning if you live 
abide. If you abide by my word, if you if you do what the command says, meaning if you honor the instruction, and if you put into practice the precept of his word, this is what Jesus said. He said, You are mine. This, you become ease. You become ease. You become one of Jesus. So anything that is of Jesus become yours. Anything that is of God become yours. Because why? You are ease. You are ease. Now, get to understand what you inherited because of you being ease. Verse 4, 1 John chapter 4. Little children, you are of God. You belong to him. Listen to this message, oh God. He says, little children, you are of God. You belong to him. And have already defeated and overcome them. So now <laughs> they, they are gathering from all corners what you have already defeated. They are coming at you from all corners what you have already defeated. They are ganging up against you what you have already defeated. How do you know this? By not subjecting yourself to their level, by not stooping low to their to their confinement, by not allowing yourself to be found. You are also, uh, don't listen. Okay, the gossip of you. Okay, now you heard the gossip about you. Now you went and meet the one who, who is the conveyor of the gossip. Now you're asking the person questions and you are interested in what they are saying about you. You already, you, you are conspiring now because you've already given into, into, in, into, into the gossip. And that gossip has now become become of you, because you 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 end up you end up uh, not only becoming a, a gossiper, but you end up also becoming one who who is not different from them. You are not different from them, because now you have become like them and of them. You become like them and of them. He says, "Do not conform." Yes, you are conforming like them. So any any office gossip. Any gossip that is ongoing that will cause your heart to be in want. Because you hear something and, and that thing has now has a and hold over you. Anything you are doing, you are thinking of what was said. Hey, this is what they said about me. You, you, are, you are causing not only delay to your life, but also you are, you are opening doors for the enemy to come and steal from you. Because you are not letting go of what you have already conquered. Oh, you hear this news. Ah, it is well. To the glory of God, I've overcome it. Instead of you to say this, you are busy entertaining what was said. You are busy thinking, dwelling much on what was said. Now, what was said and what was used now have began now to have hold, principal hold over you. It now begins to have principal hold over you. Listen to this. Little children, First John chapter 4, verse 4. Little children, you are of God. You belong to him. And I've already defeated and overcome them. The agent of the Antichrist. Because he who lives in you is greater. Look, listen to that word. He who lives. He who lives. Who lives in you? Who is in you? The overcomer lives in you. The overcomer lives in you. The one who has who has put death, death and his hold, the one who has made death to become to become hopeless, to become useless, he lives in you. The one who gives boldness and courage. He says, be courageous against what you are going through. He says, Apostle Paul, death, where is your sting? Where is your own? Because he was living with the one who is in him. He wouldn't be able to say that word if the one who is greater, mightier, does not dwell in him. He wouldn't be bold enough to speak in that manner if greater is not in him. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Little children, you are of God. Now, John, remember John 14, we quoted if you, if you go read John 14, read the whole of John 14, but, but from verse 26, you get to, you began to understand. Okay, even John 14, 12, say, great work I did, even greater you will do. But think the whole John, uh, John 14, 1, 
uh, John 15, John 16 uh, to 17. Take your time and read those three, uh, three uh, 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 chapters of John uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. You get to understand that if you keep my command, Jesus says, you are mine. We become ease because we keep his command. We, we are obedient to his word. Now, little children, you are of God. You belong to him. And I've already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, the agents of the Antichrist. Because he who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. That is why we say, do not, do not yield nor conform to gossipers. Because they might be an agent of the enemy. Do not be like them and trying to, to get back at them. Because by so doing, you are heeding to the trap of the enemy. The enemy could use anyone and anybody to entrap the saints of God. Because the enemy seeks after your life, to steal from your life, to hinder your relationship with God Almighty, to steal your precious time that you have in Christ. To bring distrust to your heart, to bring doubt to your life, to interfere with God's grace in your life, to cause you to, to disbelieve God's grace and God's power and, and the mighty are uh, straight mighty and Lord to your life. These are what the enemy is sought after. So do not allow the enemy to steal from you. The enemy came to tempt our master Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never allowed the enemy to steal from him. Jesus Christ never allowed the enemy to hinder him from speaking the word of the Father. Jesus Christ never allowed the enemy to interfere with his relationship with the Father. So never allow the enemy and his vices to steal from you. But 2 Corinthians 11 says, but we are not unaware so their ways have already been made known to you. Their traps and their deeds have already been made known to you. So you remain untouchable. You remain more than a conqueror. Because greater lives in you. Greater is in you. And by, say, and by, uh, by saying greater lives in you, we continue to partake. We continue to drink. We continue to partake and drink from what is great, what is might. This is a better report. This speaks. Now we are going to declare upon whatever that is you have there with you, whatever you have there, Whatever that is in your home, we are going to declare over it as we all are going to be partaking together. But I just want us to understand what it is that we are partaking from. Whatever it is, it may be a water from your tap, it may be whatever that was gotten from the from the supermarkets, whatever that you got from the shops. Okay. But the word of God that has that will be declared upon it over everything that is in your home, in your fridges, in your kitchen, the world becomes, the world makes it to become active. Meaning it takes effectiveness of the spirit of God and it will now begin to prosper upon you, upon your lives, upon whoever that lives with you, your blessed family, your children, your home, your marriage, your ministry, your business, your career, your finances begin to prosper because it's the plan of God for your life to be prosperous. So nothing can steal or hinder you from the plan of God. And for those who have received any kind of messages, any kind of reports, any kind of report, this will not only change your mind from those reports, but it will totally nullify, it will totally nullify every report, making those reports to become, to become useless, making those reports to become redundant, making those reports to become hopeless, and bringing and speaking 
a better and a noble report unto you. So whatever, whatever kind of report that your medical doctors have said or given to you or reported to you, or whatever report that your finances is stating, or whatever report that your condition, your situation is stating, whatever report that is happening in your health, in your marriage, amongst your children, in your home, this that we are going to be partaking from right now will nullify any report and it will bring and speaks a noble. I'm talking about a noble and a better report. Let's let's read uh let's read before we before we share before we partake. Let's open the book of Hebrews 12 quickly. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 24. He said, And to Jesus, the mediator, go between agents. Go between agents of a new covenant. Of a new covenant. So this was a this was a covenant that was made, that God made with Abraham. And remember, remember, he says, God said to Abraham, I will bless your eh, meaning. I will bless your generation. I will bless your head. And now we were, we were the sons of Abraham. We are the sons of Abraham. So now, how do how does that how does that uh, make us blessed? We come from who blesses Abraham, Jesus Christ, whom Abraham offered, whom Abraham offered is 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 uh, is ten stone. We came from him. Now, the covenant that was made, this now speaks of that covenant. This now speaks of, of that covenant. Does this confirm it that God is a keeping covenant God? So we were not we, we were not covenanted with God, but with Abraham, and we become partaker of the divine nature of God, as the world says. Why? God is not a man that he should lie. Neither a son of man that he should repent. Numbers 23 verse 19. What God has says he will do, God does. Now, Hebrews 12 verse 24. It said, unto Jesus, the mediator, go between agents of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of mercy, a better and a nobler and more gracious message than the blood of Abel which cried out for dangers. So you you, you begin you began now to uh, be merciful towards those who are, are plotting against your well-being. You begin now to be merciful towards those who are hated your guts, those who want to bring you down. You begin to be merciful to them as the blood of Christ that is upon you uh, leads you to, guides you to. And this is the body, the body of our master Jesus Christ. This was the body that was beaten. He was beaten. Isaiah 53, verse 5. It says he was beaten. His body was beaten. He was beaten for our sake. He was bruised, battered. He was bruised, battered for our sake. He was wounded for our sake. He said the capital punishment hmm, that, was, that was for us was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So every wound that was on his body brought us healing, brought us deliverance. Every wound, every wound on his body. Are you having any wound in your, on your body? Are you having any pains on your body? Are you having any discomfort on your body? Right now, as, as we are going to declare upon this right now, take whatever you have on your home and place it on the screen as we are about to declare and you are going to eat, and you are going to drink, and whatever that held you, uh, that causes discomfort on your health, on your body, whatever that brought pains to your body, whatever that brought discomfort to your body right now, you will see it no more as you are about to partake. I declare this to become the body of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the blood of Christ. I declare whatever you have in your home right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, whatever that is in your fridges, whatever that is on your table right now, I declare it right now to become the body the blood of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare what speaks, what brings, what, what br brings a noble message, a better report over you, upon your homes, 
I declare right now, the body that was wounded, beaten, battered, the body that carries those pains, sufferings, sicknesses, the body that carried those infirmity, affliction, the body that suffered poverty, the body that suffered diseases right now for our sake right now, this is the body, this is the body of Christ that has put an end to every disease, that has put an end to every sickness, that has put an end to every infirmity. This is the body that has put an end to all injustice. This is the body that has ended all evil poverty from stealing from your life. This is the blood that has come to end every evil lineage, evil of ancestry, evil of witchcraft manipulation, evil of deceit, evil of sorrows, evil of pains, evil of suffering. This is the blood that has brought a better message into your health, into your health, into your health, a better message into your body, into your body, into your body, a better message into your life, into your life, into your life, a better message into your home, into your home, into your better message upon your children, upon your children, upon your children, a better message in your businesses, in your businesses, in your business, a better message into your career into your career, into your career, a better message upon your finances, upon your finances, upon your finances, a better message upon your ministry, upon your ministry, upon your ministry, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take, eat, and drink, and receive a greater grace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Mm. Wow. Mm. Amen. Mm, 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 mm. Take drink and eat. Take drink and eat. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Please check yourself. Check your body as you are partaking. Life has come unto you. Life has come unto your body. Whatever that you are going through, it, it has come to an end. As you are partaking, and as you are still partaking, life lives have come upon you. So it, it so the end of what steals from your life, from your body, it, it has it, it, it has just happened. It is ended as you are taking, as you are partaking, as you are eating, as you are partaking. The end of sorrow is gone. The end of limitation is over. The end of pains and suffering is over. The ends of poverty is over. The ends of evil nightmare is over. The end of evil projection is over. The ends of evil arrows shot against you is over. The ends of the ends, I'm talking about the ends, the end, meaning it is end. Just as our master Jesus Christ declared, it is finished. It is over. It is finished with evil that steals, evil that interferes, evil of sorrows, evil of affliction. It is over. It is over. The Lord God Almighty have set you free. You have been set free. You have been made. You have been delivered. It is well with you. It is well with your body. Begin to exercise your body. Begin to check yourself. Begin to check your body. The hand of the Lord is upon you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Your life begins to prosper right now. Your health begins to prosper right now. Your imperfection to come from your body. Imperfection to come from your body. As the perfect tool of God has come upon you right now. The perfect tool of the God. You have been perfected right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. It is well with you in Jesus' mighty name. To those who have not given their life to Christ, remember, his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary that your life may be saved, that you, you will be saved, that you will be blessed, that you will be made whole. Right now, if you have not known the Lord God Almighty and you want to have a relationship with our Father Jesus Christ by giving your life to him so that you can become sharer of the inheritance, so that you can have the plan of God onto your life. So say this uh, by following us. This is a prayer of salvation. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I've heard and received your word. 
your word is spirit, life-giving spirit. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins before you. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of your mercy, in need of your conviction, in need of forgiveness. You laid down your life for me on the cross of Calvary, and you rose again on the third day to give me life, the abundant life. Father, wash me with your precious preventing blood that I might be whiter than snow. Save my soul today. I believe in my heart. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, you are my Redeemer, you are my Restorer. You brought upon me a better report, and you have earned all evil reports, evil arrows, evil nature from my life. I am no longer attached or known as a sinner. I am now saved, a saint of God, a believer of Christ. Lord Jesus, grant me the grace and the desire to remain in your word, to abide in your word, to hold on to your principle, and to walk by your word. Write down my name in the book of life, where there is eternity and no condemnation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Greater grace has been given unto you. It has been apportioned unto you. Uh, may you be blessed all the more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, before we go, uh, blessed viewers, I want, I want to pray for a particular person. Um, you've been having experiences of uh, um, uh, deafness, uh, deafness, uh, partial death. You've been experiencing partial death. Um, uh, the one I'm talking about is uh, your, your particular left ear. Uh, you've been having these experiences. It's as if uh, your uh, your hearing aid has been has been has been bugged. Um, you, you could not hear properly. Um, I want to pray for you right now. Uh, anyone experiencing this? It could be your left ear. It could be your right ear. Uh, the hand of the Lord will locate your life, will locate your body right now, and will set you free. Also, someone. You've been experiencing a uh, heaviness in your stomach, heaviness, uh, heaviness. Like you, like you feel like your, your muscle, your muscle contracts in in your stomach. It, it becomes very heavy, it becomes very 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 heavy. Uh, I'm also gonna be praying for some uh someone who is having such experiences. Uh, uh bear it in mind that it, this is just a confirmation of what God had already done. Uh, God had already done it through the message that you've received, a better message. Uh, uh, the message that brings a noble and a better report to your health, to your body. Now we are saying this as a confirmation, and also uh, for for you to for you to be a for you to have a, a assurance that it is well and it is done. The mighty name of Jesus Christ is the word of Lord that has come upon the rooftop of where you are right now, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, causing your life, your body to prosper, just as your soul prospers. Life that has come upon your body. Life that has come upon you right now. Life that has come upon your body. Life that has come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command evil spirit of deafness to live your life. Evil spirit of deafness to live your body right now. Evil spirit of deafness, depart from your life, depart from your body. That that causes evidence in your stomach right now, I command it to lose its grip. To lose its grip upon your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Evil behind that in your body right now, lose its grip, lose its hold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The price that our master Jesus Christ has paid, the word that he said, it is finished, I declare it is over and finished with evil that steals, evil that kills, evil that destroys, it is over with it from your life, from your body right now. May your ear right now begin to hear right in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All discomfort, every painful, every partial deafness, evil spirit of deafness, I command it out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Evil spirit of deafness, I command it out from your life. Evil spirit of deafness, Evil spirit of deafness, get out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Evil spirit of deafness, get out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The evidence in your stomach, I command it out from your body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. I declare right now, this week, the hand of the Lord is upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The greater grace of the Father right now rests abundantly upon you. The unfailing glory of the Father overshadow your life, overshadow your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Greater grace rests upon you right now. The greater grace rest upon your body, rest upon your life, rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is well with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is well with your health. 
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is well with your body. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it is well with you right now. You are lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your life is lifted up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare no sickness shall seize you. I declare no evil shall seize you. I declare no evil witchcraft manipulation perpetrated against you that will seize your life nor prevail against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are of God and the great, the greater grace that is of, that is that is from the Father right now. Continually, continually, continually lift you up against all adversities. Continually lift you up against every circumstances. Continually lift you up against any situation that you are found in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare right now that no weapon of the enemy that has been used against you, against any member of your family, against your home, against your marriage, against your businesses, against your career, against your education, against your, your blessed uh, parents, I declare no weapon used against them formed against them, that will prevail upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you continue to grow in, in, in the ministry. May the, may the spiritual growth continue to be seen in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you continue to remain where God Almighty has placed you, as I declare. May the plan of the Father be made manifest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is well with your life. It is well with your body. You are perfected. You are made up. You are delivered. You are lifted up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The love of God remain upon you. This is the love that has overcome all things. This is the love of God that has prevailed you from all things. So of all things you have overcome, all things you have prevailed over. May the glory of the Father remain upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. It is well with you. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's appreciate the Father. Let's thank God for what he has done for us. Let's give him all the glory. All glory belongs to him. All honor belongs to him. You are loved. You are loved. You are blessed. Thank you so much, our, our blessed saints, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you so much, everyone who has been here with us. As you are blessed all the more, uh, may you remain in, in the offending glory of the Father. Uh, may, may the King of Glory blesses you all the more in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have come to the end of the live uh, broadcast from all the social media platforms as we'll be going straight to Rabboni Center Ministries, blessed viewers. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow uh, as we continue with the Bible session, Monday Bible session. Uh, uh, bear it in mind that, um, uh, blessed viewers, if you have any uh, question regarding the teachings, if you have a um, um, uh, prayer request, or if you have uh, counseling issues, or you have uh, things that are bothering your heart and you, don't, you want us to assist you with, uh, understand this, that we are here to serve. Uh, we are here to serve you. Um, there are no consultation. Uh, there are no consultation. Uh, if you want, if you want us to, to assist you uh, with prayers, if you want us to assist you with the with the teaching of the of the word, uh, if you want us to, uh, if you want us to uh, pray with you, uh, there are numbers that are that are available on on our, our Facebook page. For those who are streaming, watching us on TikTok. Our Facebook page and our YouTube page remain Rabbanites International Ministries. If you go through our pages, you will find our uh, whole information about us. Uh, you can take the numbers that have been displayed there, and you can use those numbers. It is face, uh, it is WhatsApp enabled. You can send us your prayer requests. Uh, you can send us your question. Uh, if you want us to to assist you with prayers, you can also use those numbers. And if you also want to be part of a live broadcast on TikTok. Uh, please do uh, uh, send us uh, your name and uh, uh, your name and your details on on uh, on uh, on, our, on our messenger earlier, so that we can uh, 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 place you or put you in the live broadcast on TikTok. Uh, we would love to welcome. We would love to have you here. Uh, we are we are here to do the work of God together, and um, it is um, it is glorifying to also have people. And brothers and sisters, uh, we, we we are not asked by languages or by the colors of our skin. Uh, we are known by love because love, uh, uh, love, love does not, uh, 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 love does not uh, compare ethnicity. Love does not compare languages. Uh, love does not compare uh, the color of your skin. Uh, love uh, prevails over all those. So uh, if 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 it is placed in your heart that you you want to be part of this uh, fellowship and you don't know how to go about it, just let us know and um, who, who assist you, who, who are here to, who are here to serve, who are here to serve. So thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, may you be blessed on the month. And also, uh, if the Spirit of God has laid in your heart uh, to give to this ministry, 
uh, you want to support the ministry, you want to uh, uh, give as the as, as 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 the spirit of God has placed in your heart. Remember, uh, we don't force people to give. Uh, we don't beg people to give. We don't force people to give. But if the spirit of God has placed in your heart to give to this ministry, uh, you are more than willing uh, to do so uh, by the numbers that have been displayed on our Facebook pages. Uh, if you call on the numbers, then we will put you through on how to go about it. Uh, it is not complicated. Uh, you just make a call and <laughs> we will put you through. We love you. God loves you. Uh, uh, we are saying that your life will never be the same again. Uh, continue to partake in the body, continue to partake in the blood of Christ, and the greater grace that you have received will be made multiplied. How be it lovely for greater grace to be made multiplied? Greater grace made multiplied. So you will continue to overcome all things in life. You will continue to overgrown all things, overgrown bad habits, habitual things that are not pleasing to God, and overcome habits that tend to stand against you and your relationship with God. Because there are things that are habitual. Well, the Bible says we should walk habitual in the things of the Father, in the ways of the Father. So there are things that tend to stand against you. There are things that tend to hinder you. So the more you partake in the body, the more you partake in the blood, the more your report changes. The more the, the, the agent of the enemy be subdued, and the more uh, the glory of God being glorified in, in your life. God loves you. God is with you. We love you dearly. Uh, may you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We'll meet again tomorrow. So as of now, we are going to wrap up this center with this place. Amen. Love you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus.